Along this wall, we're gonna have three spillway bowls cut into the tops of the walls. So we have these big four foot tall ribbons of water dumping into this open area in through here. This white line right here is that bridge element. And then again, more pond. This is also a four foot tall brick wall. Now, when I say four feet tall, that does not include the part of it that's underwater. So it'll actually end up being about a six foot tall wall by the time it's all said and done. We are going to do an intake system on this. The whole bottom of this will have small aqua blocks and then a big bib liner over the top and then the intake cove will be right there and all the water will be coming in 360 degrees around so I'm really excited how that's going to turn out. Chris from Team Aquascape. We got a brand new episode for you. We've got a little bit different of a look. You can see I'm rocking some new spectacles. Apparently, the older you get, the worse your vision gets. It's weird. So you may be seeing me in these a little bit more frequently. But today's episode, we are going to be starting our Sandbox Studio rendition of Joey Genovese's from Genoscapes out of Toronto, Canada. His design of the Sandbox. Joey designed a water feature for this booth. As you've seen, we've had Artist of the Year come in in the past and complete take over this space. He designed an incredible modern contemporary look for this entire backyard and super super excited to share that with you. But in the meantime we still have a lot of stuff in here. We just completed about a week's worth of Aquascape Academies. Jack just got done building a 7 by 9 foot pond with some interns yesterday. So we're constantly moving in here. Now it is time to completely demo this entire space, get all of the trees out, move everything around and get that blank canvas to pull off Joe's design. To do that we've got to pull everything out of here. That's the name of the game for today. Enjoy. So the guys are already tearing up the turf. It is so ridiculously dry in here. You can just see the amount of dust that's being generated just by shaking out this turf. The trick with this stuff is, is we want to make sure that it stays nice and clean. So we have to clean this stuff after it comes out of here and get as much of that debris and everything off as we can. This looks disgusting. You guys want some dust masks or something? Safety glasses? Maybe a little bit. So we're going to pull all this turf out, get it clean, get it put away. These are stadium bench seating that we had set up for our academy. We had one here. We had one over on the deck so that the attendees that would come, they would sit on the bench seats and watch as Team Aquascape built their ponds in here and we narrated answered questions all that good stuff so first is going to be to get the turf out so that we don't destroy it as we're tearing everything else out then what we'll do is we will take any plants remaining that are salvageable that haven't been totally crisp by the dryness in here we basically lost all of those ewes and the arborvitaes unfortunately throughout the process of the last two months of academies fortunately for us these big spruces are still alive those are actually going to move over in this back area so we don't have to move them very far but we're going to completely level this space the only thing that's really not moving would obviously be that column that we put that big tree skin around and then the shedster with the pergola all that stuff's going to stay as well and of course the house is not going anywhere because that would just be silly but everything else in here what you got there Ooh, lemon cake pound cake nice then everything else is gonna just be level. So we've got our work cut out for us today, but I think we'll put a pretty good dent in this and get this thing at least flat today. All right, so they got almost all the turf up. Man, it is super dusty in here. We got Steve rolling the last little section up. This will all go back down the next academy. I hope you guys like color coded them or something, you know, like paint by numbers. Oh yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a puzzle piece otherwise. Yeah, I'm sure we'll figure it out. can see we are making really good headway right now we ripped out the pond that we were using the academies and dan standing right where our basin was standing as you guys can see uh, just a pile of dirt now yeah we are cruising away it's we just finished up lunch and we're uh, we're in that back section now and so what we have left to do to prep for joey's sandbox build we gotta rip out these three boulders here we're gonna be moving this tree and then we're unfortunately gonna be tearing apart this basalt pondless waterfall it's been here ever since this sandbox has been put in so it's gonna be kind of bittersweet tearing this out but 
we gotta tear it out in order to make room for Joey's booth. And we just gotta move those two boulders in front of Steve. We gotta move those boulders out, rip out all these Arbor Vitae's. Those are all gonna go bye-bye and then move our, our big spruce trees in front of that window in front of the other spruce tree. So yeah, and then level it out and then we can start on Joey's booth. So just wanted you guys a quick update. Stay tuned. I know you guys, it'll be a couple seconds for you guys. Unfortunately for us, it'll be more like an hour. Stay tuned. So we just got word that the wall stone for Joey's display is here. Illinois Brick just called. The semi's here. We've got, I don't know, probably 15 pallets of brick that we need to get unloaded. Now it's time to get it off the truck. These are a mountain of Christmas trees that we stole from people's houses. Illinois Brick to the rescue again. Looks like it was a direct load from Unilock. This is that wall stone that we talked about. This is what's gonna pull off that very contemporary look for Joe's display. Awesome, so we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 pallets. That's about 20 tons of brick. This is gonna be awesome. It's a little bit cold of a day, but we'll get you unloaded, sir. How we doing? Doing good, man. You can good, just, man. You can just show me where you want them and I'll unload Cool, them. all right. Gosh, these guys make it look so easy. It is frigid cold outside. That's one down, we got about 12 to go. I'm gonna go ahead and let the driver do his thing and uh, I'm gonna get back inside where it's a little bit more toasty. Mm-hmm. kind of just sweeping things up. We've got everything built back up to grade where we want it. We moved those four spruce trees around, got them over there. They're gonna be a permanent fixture there. You can see they're kind of mounted up now. A lot of the spoils as we're working our way out will end up getting thrown up over here to create a berm. I'm super excited to lay this design out. All right, a lot more bells and whistles on this one, but it's going to lend itself to a contemporary design here inside of the Sandbox Studio. Completely different than what we've really seen from the rest of the artists of the year. So I'm really, really excited. I actually enjoy these contemporary modern designs. It's something that I'm considering to do at my own house because it will really blend in with the landscape at my house as well. But we're going to try it out here. Joey's design looks incredible. Let me come over here and show it to you. So we're standing out here on the deck right now. I'm going to go ahead and lay this down. You can see where my vantage point is from. I'm looking back towards the shed. We've got those trees over here. Here's that big slider glass door leading you out from the house. The deck on the design is right here. I'm standing right in the middle of it. All the blue area over here is pond. You can see we have, it's very, very square and rectangular in a lot of areas. The cool thing about it is this bridge that will lead you across over to a new patio that will sit. It'll be about 30% larger than the patio that currently sits in front of the shed, but I'm loving this bridge idea. I love any water features that have a bridge in it. I especially love how it mimics the overall design and has that zigzag back over and you're not walking in a straight line. I just love the movement of the bridge. The right angles. Again, going back to that contemporary design. We're gonna have a tall wall here with three spillway bowls. We're gonna have a green wall over here to help screen off the shed as well as screen the view from the shed looking back. I can't wait to show you this area, but big section of pond over here. I'm gonna let you guess what that is and we'll talk about that later in the video. Over here behind the screening of these evergreens, right around there will be a collection of urns and spheres dumping in back into the pond. And then back in this area is, we initially 
initially dubbed it like a koi treadmill, but what we're gonna do is you see all these little circles. Those are all spheres. Three different sizes, large, medium, and smalls. That's going to sit back over in that area over there. And what we're going to do is kind of make a bouldery stream with no boulders. We're just gonna use the spheres. So we're gonna have all the spheres kind of butting up to each other and letting the water careen and rip through those spheres. It's gonna be a really, really cool area over there, providing a heck of a lot of interest back towards the sitting area of the patio and inside the sheds through over there. So a long raceway with the spheres, and then it will dump into the pond. There'll be a, a large open section of pond here. Back over there will be the urns and sphere collection into a big contemporary pond running right through here. And of course, we'll have our bridge going this way. At about 19 feet, it will dog leg back to the right, hard 90 degree turn, go another 14 feet, and then go back into that shed. Really, really excited because as you can see, a lot of straight lines, hard edges, very, very contemporary. Very excited to put this together. I'm gonna take this and I am going to paint it out over here and get up on the roof of the house up here and give you guys kind of a bird's eye view before we start digging. The thing that will eat up the most amount of time is just getting all of our lines nice and straight in through here, making sure that all of our right angles are gonna match up because we are going to build a lot of brick walls inside the liner. There is some boulder work in here and we will use some aqua blues for that to kind of tie back in to that stack slate and the complement of the color and characteristics of the stone really complement the stack slate spheres and urns that we're gonna be using. So there's our design. I'm gonna paint it out and then we're gonna go ahead and get digging. this wall over here and because the shed is at an angle I think the best way would just since we already have this whole planter marked okay. right let's just measure what we have to go over and that's at a 12 foot distance from that corner straight over towards the side of the booth remember we've got to scale it down so I am right at 11 feet 11 from that corner Right there, that corner of this wall, right there, that boulder, that's this thing, what's this? I don't see a pole anywhere on there, Joe, Mr. Genovese. All right, well, I think it looks like this is only like a six to an eight foot wide span. It's gonna be cutting really close. I think we have to bring it out this way and maybe bring it around. I think we should probably help him. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it is his design, so it's his mistake, so he should be the one to try and figure out what is happening. But that wall is supposed to run like straight this way back towards the back side of the booth and then all this would be, this whole area would be spheres. I think we could probably shift it this way, but he might have a better idea. If he doesn't answer, we're not stopping. Figure something else out, I guess. Probably at his weekly Manny Petty. Oh, FaceTime unavailable. So see, he put me right to voicemail. Let's, let's try calling him. Maybe he just doesn't have his face on yet for the day. Wi-Fi call will be charged as per your international plan. The guy's in Toronto, so it's not like he's the other side of the planet. Oh, there you are. Why didn't you answer my FaceTime? Yeah, I was just on school with my kid. Oh, I thought you were. It's over now. It's over now. <laughs> I thought I interrupted your weekly Manny Petty or something, you know. So. I want to, yeah. No, man. <laughs> I gotta sit through class. Oh, that's right. Cause yeah, you're doing the whole homeschooling thing right now. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. a big bummer. Okay. All right. Well. Joe, I hate to be the bearer of not unfortunate news, but you know the area right next to the Babley Brook with all the spheres and all that stuff? The, yeah. the corner of that interior wall closest to the patio, it dead ends right at the pole that we have right in the center of our booth, which I don't know if you knew was here. Uh, I know there was a pole that dropped in a tree. Yes. On yes. So that one, that one would be right that it was closest to the first thing. I mean, it's right there at the corner where the beer collection, that part, that portion of the stream, that Babbley Brook is dumping into the pond. So my question to you is, I think we need to refine the design a little bit and shift something one way or the other. Yeah, I hope, I hope I, that. I, I really get that far over. No, it is 
Do you have time to FaceTime? I can show you? Yeah. Okay, here we go. There you are, there you are. You look handsome. You look handsome today. Thanks, man. I look handsome, you look handsome. <laughs> so what's going on? So, let me turn this around so you don't have to look at my face. So right, this pole right here sits right at right there. So it's, it's literally that boulder based on the, the drawing when we squared everything off. So we've got that planter, right? It's got the live wall you know, right there. And then the bridge obviously comes in here and then there's some boulder work. So my question for you is, is what if we shifted everything over this way and had this pole kind of inside the patio but did like a little plant area? Are you... Yeah, we, yeah. Hey, we, we talked about this. I, Brian and I talked about this news already. Oh, you did? Well, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it's... Sorry. So it's I Brian. Was so yeah, we're gonna do like a little, like a make it a bigger area, even put some trees around the post. And yeah, sure, if you need to shift that. So okay. Yeah, okay. We need to do like seems like there's quite a bit of room there. Though. Yeah. Like further that way. There is to come this way because we could always yeah. build, you know, this area with the trees outside of the booth, even right, yeah. like vault them up because yeah. we've got that four foot wall where you've got those shrub symbols and that kind of stuff on that back side, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Five minutes later. Well, Joe, thanks for taking my call, man. I appreciate it. I just wanted to defer back to you. It's your brainchild back here, and I think you got the right idea just to ship that over just a couple feet and make a little plant pocket around there. So, okay. Yeah, I think it'll actually look good too, and like it'll kind of give a little hidden area in that one corner. Yeah. Where it's not so open, it wasn't so open as per the design. So, yeah, yeah. I think that'll be better. Cool, man. It'll work out better, man. Awesome. All right. Thanks, bud. I'll be back in touch, okay? All right. Talk to you. All right. Thank bye. You. We're going to end up shifting the whole Sphere Collection Babbly Brook stream area over towards the perimeter of the sandbox, allowing us a little bit more room. And I think what we'll do is we'll just create, because that pole sits right here, right here at the end of the wall. So we're going to shift everything over probably about three feet and really hug this over here. This is about a six foot wide trough in through here where we're gonna have the spheres. So if we build our wall right along the back edge of this, two, three, four, five, six, that gives us plenty of room to landscape this. Maybe we'll just do like a little plant island in here just to kind of break up the patio. But that's good. Thank God we have the extra space going this way. Otherwise, I don't think we would have been able to kind of pull off this look on this side. So I guess stuff happens. You just have to be willing to adapt, but this is probably the best possible outcome we could have asked for. And Joe's good with it, so we're good with it. So we're just gonna keep rolling, Josh, and just kind of shift this whole section over, mark out this trough where the spheres are gonna go, and then figure out where like both Boulders, patio, that kind of stuff's gonna work. So it wasn't as bad as I had thought. Joe's usually very stringent, sticking to his designs and his vision. So I was really glad to see he was able to adapt with us. But he's not here anyways. So we would have done whatever we thought was best anyway. So any who for you Canadians out there. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So here I am walking on the bridge. Josh and I finished painting out all of the design. We've got the left-hand side over here. This is going to be a four foot tall brick wall. Goes that way, there will be a live wall on the perpendicular section, meaning a green wall of sorts. Once we get into the video and that's getting installed, I'll show you that, but there will be a live wall there. Continue back into a brick wall and then another brick wall. And we really wanna screen that view from where Josh is coming back from where the shed is back this way. So we're gonna block all that off along this wall we're gonna have three spillway bowls cut into the tops of the walls so we have these big four foot tall ribbons of water dumping into this open area in through here this white line right here is that bridge element and then again more pond this is also a four foot tall brick wall now when I say four feet tall that does not include the part of it that's underwater so it'll actually end up being about a six foot tall wall by the time it's all said and done we are going to do an intake system on this the whole bottom of this will have small aqua blocks and then a big bib liner over the top and then the intake cove will be right there and all the water will be coming in 360 degrees around so i'm really excited how that's going to turn out follow along on the bridge that will lead you to the patio where josh is all of this space with the exception of this kind of curve right here everything that way going all the way to the corner of the shed the corner of this will all be brick pavers coming right up to our bridge element cruz from crux lawn who you've seen in a couple of our videos is a certified unilock contractor he's a amazing he's gonna come in and do all
all that work for us. Over here, you see some other white marks on the ground. These are just some retaining stones that's gonna hold back the soil. We are going to end up creating a plant pocket as per our conversation with Joe after we shifted everything over this way. More open pond, we'll probably tuck a big boulder right out in the middle to get water to split around it. You see a little orange dot over there. That is the center of our jumbo urn. So we're gonna do a collection of urns in here, a jumbo, maybe a couple larges, a medium, but this will be an urn section. And the idea is you can only see the top of the urn standing on the patio just over that four foot wall. So you just barely see that jumbo urn, but it's not until you come across this bridge and get to about this point here when you really start to see more of that urn. So this is gonna be one of those fountainscape areas where we have boulders, urns, that kind of stuff, twisting, turning waterfalls, big upper pooling area. That's why we've burned a lot of that stuff up as well. And you can see the root balls of those trees are extremely high. Open water, and then you get into that raceway area where we're gonna start laying out the spheres. But this is the perimeter or the footprint of this big trough in through here. And the idea is we strategically place the different size spheres and we are going to get water ripping between them so these are acting as frame rocks and just a series of pitcher falls everywhere we'll incorporate a couple boulders in here maybe incorporate one into the wall itself so we're going to start laying this out but i'm really really pleased with the overall design i was just telling josh i get super excited when we start getting paint on the ground in here and the design is going to start coming to life so pleased with the progress so far is a little slow kind of marking everything out but that's okay i wanted to give you guys a visual representation of what exactly the booth would look like and tell you what why don't I take you upstairs I'll give you a bird's eye view real quick before we start breaking ground in here okay let's see what we got over here through window number one. Oh boy that's cool because you'll only be able to see part of it from up here there's that sphere section over there we're gonna add one two three four we're gonna add about five more spheres over there let's walk over here Oh yeah, that's the view right there. That's that contemporary looking bridge. You've got Josh on Tinder. He comes complete with every design. There's that bridge. You can see Jack ambling through the pond. And then back over there is that sphere section. Let's go over here, window number three. And here is window number three. This is probably the best view in the house, not because Jack's on the deck staring back at you, but you see everything, including the tops of the jumbo urn and the waterfall collection over there. So really, really pleased with how it's turning out. So we have a majority of this area hogged out already. We've got a small pile here. We have to continue to move back. You can see we have a decent amount of soil back there building a berm. That's where the large or the jumbo urn and a couple of large urns and a medium urn are gonna sit over there as an urn collection. You've got Jack over here kind of leveling things back out. Because we are in the warehouse and everything slopes this way, the deepest we could get was about 21 inches over in these two corners over here. So we are gonna maintain that same elevation all the way through here and have about 18 inches of water which brings you about halfway up the large sphere about right here and it'll bring you up about nah, just under three quarters of the way so between two thirds and three quarters of the way up the medium sphere and then the small sphere will look almost I mean that's probably right about here gonna be a really really neat effect with those just barely peeking out of water before we get the liner and stuff in I will go ahead and dry set a lot of these back in there we over dug a foot on each side so we dug the outside orange line so that we can compensate for the thickness of the wall stone and a couple inches to fudge it either way to make sure our lines are nice and straight. Once we get the entire bottom elevation set, everything compacted, nice and level, front to back and side to side, we can go ahead and lay that fabric and liner in and drop down the first course of wall stone and go ahead and start building our perimeter and we'll continue to build up. The hardest part is always setting that bottom course. You wanna make sure that it's absolutely perfect when doing it. So you'll start at the corner and you'll continue to work your way in both directions. Directions. You just want to make sure that you set elevations properly underneath the fabric liner because you don't want to have to pull that stuff back and forth as you're going through and building that wall. So we're going to keep rolling. We've got Jack almost done, just kind of picking through some of the gravel, but you can see we've got it nice and level in here, going front to back, and then we will be doing the same side to side. Just a quick progress update. They are excited. You can hear the beeping in the warehouse because we have our excavation for this stream area complete. As you can see, came in through here. We ended up about 21 
seven inches of depth from grade down to the bottom. That's as far down as we could get. So then we just took that same level all the way that way. So this is where our brick walls are gonna run inside the liner. And I think we're gonna try and elevate this a little bit. So I'd like to show you that when we get to that point. But this brick wall along the back will be about two feet taller than existing grade. And the one up front will be just a little bit taller than grade. And what I mean by when I'll show you later how we're gonna work the liners, we're actually gonna fold those between a couple courses of brick to bring water level up a little bit higher, giving the illusion that this is a raised bed in through here with the stream and everything, but I think it's gonna really look sharp. Might get a little wonky over in that corner with some of the folds, but we'll be able to figure that out. There's gonna be patio coming all the way up to this brick wall, which will look fantastic. But now it's time for fabric, liner, and fabric. And since we have everything nice and level in here, we can go ahead and start with our bottom course of this Unilock wall stone. This, I believe, is old quarry in granite color, so it's kind of got the blue gray hue. Really, really sharp. It looks great when it's wet also. It really darkens up. Should match really well with the aqua blues and everything else we have going on. So excited about that. But that's what we're gonna use for our wall stone throughout this project and this design. You ready to go, Jack? Yes. Fabric liner? Let's go. All right, so here we go. We got the fabric going down and then the liner will be right after that. So we get that fabric in there, that's that protective underlayment. Nearly as necessary inside here in the warehouse, but we try to practice what we preach and it'll make clean out easy. 